All right, I just want to do a quick explanation for y'all of the Lily scene in IPEC Go 2. I'm not going to be talking about any other part of the short film. I just want to go over the scene and really only information as it pertains to the rapture and the timing of the rapture. So, in my opinion, this scene is the centerpiece of the entire short film. Uh, it gives it's really the only scene that gives you concrete information in terms of time. Uh, the rest of this, the short film is kind of dreamlike and it's hard to decode exactly when things are happening. So what the scene is really talking about is the, the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation. And you can see that in the back wall you've got the door with the exit sign, which is a clear reference to the rapture. So the first thing you need to know when you look at the scene is that there are multiple layers. Uh, one layer is a scriptural layer. I think this entire short film was created by AI, and I think one of the inputs to the AI was Song of Songs Chapter 2. Song of Songs is a book of the Bible. It's also called uh, Song of Solomon. So we can take a look at Song of Solomon Chapter 2, one, verses 1 through 3 and verses 8 through 13. Right? So, Verses one, verse one is, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. And verse two is, like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. So we've got rose and a lily. And as you see here, the little virgin has a rose in her ear. And you've got a lily on the right wall. And if you go to the Heliophant website, you can find that her name is actually Lily. That's her official name. You can't actually go to the Heliophant website because it was just taken down about three or four days ago. So, uh, but you can go to the Wayback Machine, and check it there. I actually have a screenshot of it right here. Her name is Lily. So continuing in verse three, like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. So, apple, and she's holding an apple. All right, moving on to verse 8, we have the voice of my beloved. Behold, he comes leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. So we have a leaping stag. And over here on the left wall, you've got a leaping stag. In verse 13, the fig tree puts forth her green figs and the vines with the tender grapes give a good smell. Now if you look on the back wall on the right side you've got your vines. So there might be more and maybe you guys can find them. Uh, more references to that chapter or to other parts of scripture in this scene. But that was more than enough for me to conclude that this scene is visually depicting that, that, that chapter in the Bible. So the next layer is what I call the astro-symbolic layer. And that's um, sort of an artistic depiction in this scene of the sky, right? So constellations, sun, moon, stars, planets, and so on. So the first thing I'll point out is you've got these 12 blue figurines. And each figurine has a sort of egg-shaped head and um, with craters on it, sort of crater, craters that uh, resemble the appearance of the moon. So that's a pretty obvious hint that these are uh, the 12 moons in a calendar year or you can say the 12 months and yeah other than that you've got the virgin sitting in a ring with an adjacent dot so let's hop on over to an astronomy program and see what uh, we can find so this is Stellarium and here I'm looking um, October 14th 2023 at Virgo and the constellation Virgo. And if you zoom in here, let me back up a few minutes here. Yeah, so on that day you've got an annular eclipse. An annular eclipse is a type of eclipse that um, kind of resembles a ring because the moon is a little bit closer than the sun so you, it doesn't cover it totally and you've got a ring around the edge. And yeah, on that date you've got a ring eclipse and you've got Mercury sort of next to it. So we have a ring eclipse in Virgo, and you've got a virgin in a ring. So there you go, that's your, that's what it's depicting there. It's depicting that annular eclipse. And you've got this adjacent dot, which in my opinion is, is Mercury, since Mercury was sitting there next to that eclipse. Okay, 
so um, so why is this 2023 and not some other year? Uh, well, there's a couple ways you can answer that. Um, one of them is the fact that in 2023 we had a sort of rare uh, occurrence um, in which one of the months had two full moons. It doesn't really happen very often. It didn't happen for, for a few years prior to 2023, and it won't happen for a few years after 2023. And that here is de depicted visually by these two moons, as we noted that they look like before, having a con having conjoined heads, right? And to me, that's um, sort of visually showing us August, which is the month that has two full moons, right? Uh, the other way, the other thing that sort of gives it away is the the rabbit here on the back wall, and um, they use this rabbit a lot in a lot of their occult stuff um, to show 2023 because it's, it's because it's the Chinese year of the rabbit, so they'll usually either use a rabbit or a cat. Uh, cat is, is the Vietnamese zodiac, and rabbit is the Chinese zodiac. Um, just off the top of my head, I can think. Um, I think the movie *Knowing* with Nicolas Cage uses also a rabbit uh, in the same way. Um, yeah, so you've got uh, the rabbit also giving away 2023. Um, what's left? So little girl is holding an apple, which she drops, and which then rolls over this ring. Which let me try to show you real fast. Okay, so when the apple rolls over the ring, it's got honey on it. So that right there is the giveaway that this ring is made out of honey, okay? And there's really only um, one day of the year that, that has any relevance to apples being dipped in honey, and that's Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. So you can see that that's the traditional food eaten on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which is celebrated in the Jewish seventh month, like the, the first day of the seventh month. So that's sort of narrowing it down to that. Um, and I believe, for reasons that I won't get into here, that the current standard Jewish calendar is one month ahead, and it really when they're celebrating Rosh Hashanah in September, they should be doing it in October. So, let's go back to the movie here. So I think that, um, yeah, this is basically showing that October 14th eclipse, which occurs two or three days prior to the, what I, in my opinion, is the true Rosh Hashanah. So, and I think yeah, what they're telling us here is that the rapture in the beginning of the tribulation happens on that date or around that date. So um, it's not going to happen. It wouldn't happen exactly. So Rosh Hashanah doesn't happen actually on the new moon. It happens the way Jewish um, months work is that you have to wait until the first sliver is seen. And that's usually two or three days after the new moon. So it wouldn't happen like exactly on this October 14th eclipse. Um, it would it would take place two or three days after. Actually, if you look at Torah calendar, so I'm looking at the eighth month, which, like I said, I actually believe is the true seventh month. Um, Rosh Hashanah is the 17th of October. So Rosh Hashanah is also Feast of Trumpets, and um, Feast of Trumpets is a two-day festival. So the Feast of Trumpets would be 17th of October and 18th of October. And I think that um, it's more likely that the rapture would happen on the second day. So... So if I had to guess, um, then I would say that the rapture is going to happen on the 18th of October, 2023. So I guess that's it. Thank you very much. If you have any comments or tips or something else that you guys discover, uh, just leave them in the comment section below. Thanks.